Hi there, it's Mike Thornton from Pro Tools Expert and in the last of this series of three videos looking at the ways to use Waves Max Space, Renaissance Space and Low Air plugins in audio post-production. In this final video we're going to concentrate on the third of those, the Low Air plugin. Now, low air is different to max bass and renaissance bass in that low air generates subharmonics, i.e. harmonics below the fundamental, whereas max bass and renaissance bass both generate plugins above the fundamental to give the impression of better low frequency reproduction, especially in smaller speakers. Now, you'll get a sense of what low air is doing if I play this same clip from Russ talking about the Waves DigiGrid. Waves already have a presence with Digico in the live world, and this was really created for the live world, and now they're kind of porting it over to the studio world as well. Some news is that we're going to... You can to hear the subharmonics of Russ's voice clearly there. If I increase the low-pass filter, so we increase the cutoff of the low-pass filter, and then have another listen... Waves already have a presence with Digico in the live world, and this was really created for the live world, and now they're kind of porting it over to the studio world as well. Some you can hear that low air has added a lot more in. So if we now play this again, we've got the direct control here, and we can change that, and you can just hear exactly what low air is doing. So we've got this cutoff filter here. Now we can increase the amount of the low air effect by increasing this control here. We can take up to 30 dBs. But let me just bring that down a moment. And then this next control here actually adds up to 30 dBs of gain. Basically, we'll add saturation type effects into the process. So if I just hit the Alt key, that's back to normal. And then that's with 30 dBs. So it won't clip, but it just will put more saturated effect into the process. So that's the low control. And then, as you saw a moment ago, this actually controls the mix between the original and the process version. Some news is that we're going to be doing a webinar with Waves to talk about the DigiGrid system. So we can change the mix between the original and the process version. And then we've got an output level. So as you saw just a moment ago, it clipped a little bit. So maybe we'll just bring that down a little bit. And I'll just keep it all comfortable. And now they're kind of porting it over to the studio world as well. Some news is that we're going to be doing a, a webinar with Waves to talk about the DigiGood system. There are two basic versions of low air. There is the one here for mono and stereo channels. And then there is this one here, which is designed for surround channels. And they are both the same and different. So if we look at the stereo mono one, the main difference here is that, as you heard, the process signal is mixed back into the main output of the plugin. So that's why we have this mixed control, and that's why we have an overall output control. If we move over to the surround version, you can see that there is no mix control because the key difference in the surround version is that the process audio does not come back into the main output. It is only fed into the LFE control. And we've got these faders here so we can determine how much of the main left right is fed to the process, how much of the center channel, how much of the surround channels, and how much of the LFE channels. But the key thing to remember is that the main surround audio passes through low air unaffected. We send elements to the process and that process purely goes to the main LFE output, hence the output control labeled LFE output, because that's just determining how much of the process is fed into the LFE channel. So let's try some sound effects. Now, in order for you to hear the benefit, I've fed the output of this plugin into a down mixer, so you can hear the effect mixed back in through the down mixer, but normally it would go straight to the LFE channel. So let's try our gun first. So here we are in bypass. Now put that in. And you can hear that the effect isn't significant until I bring up the range control so that the top end cutoff for the low pass filter is allowing more audio into the process. 
So now we're starting to get some thump. And obviously I could increase the effect and I could use the saturation. And now we're really starting to get somewhere. So that's our handgun. So now let's take a look at the machine gun. So I'll just bring that down a little bit just so that we're not overcooking it. And then we'll just bypass it. So now let's put the plug-in in. And again, we start to get that nice low end. And again, I can drive the process saturated a lot more. And just you can just imagine that going through to the LFE channel, how effective that could be. So let's take a look at an explosion. So first, this one here. So let's just play that in bypass. Not a huge amount of low end. So now let's put the plug-in in. So let's put the saturation right up. And that is so much better. So bypass. And now with the plug-in in. And let's take a look at uh, a different explosion. Perhaps one that's got a little more low end. So here we go. Here it is in bypass. So we just need to be quite subtle with this one. Maybe bring the range down a little bit. See what happens if we drive it a bit harder. Okay, so we've certainly seriously overcooked that. So let's just perhaps just bring the saturation down a bit and also bring the output down a bit. Clear the clip light. And there we go. Once more. So without, with. Really this sort of domain of explosions and thunder is really where low air is designed to do its job. So of course there are some presets here. Uh, the aliens are here. That's pretty well everything turned up. But you can see the LFE output has been brought down by 18 dBs to compensate for these being flat out. We've got LFE enhanced, so it's just sort of adding a little bit to the LFE. So it gives you a sense of where you can start. Bass guitar enhancer, so great for putting some subharmonics in a bass guitar if you're working in the music context. So different options there to get you going from within the presets menu. So I hope you found this series on the Waves low-end plugins helpful, and I'll see you again soon.